to run the Druid. We have just seen two games of that. So. Yeah, okay. Lone Druid can hit the Tomb, so they don't need... Dairy look, Dairy look. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I love the double tomb, though. Well, I mean, Lone Druid's the best for that, because he's got a bear and a hero, so he can attack both. Very big. Uh, <laughs> the point strike. Oh, for whom? Great ways of picking the is pretty hard mid. Admiral yeah, that's true. Okay, the Kunker comes out. This is, this is a hero we're more used to seeing, especially from Windstrike. Uh, nice Iceberg hero. That hero can uh, kind of change the game and, and direct the pace of the game, which is exactly what they want Iceberg to be doing. And, uh, I mean, generally lanes up pretty well versus Morphling, and he doesn't really lose a lane too hard to anything. So, yeah, he's a good hero to have when the enemy team got the pick over you. Yeah, I don't mind this. Give some more team fights. Well. Remaining. I think Empire Hope have some Five major damage remaining. issues at the moment. Pop, at the moment, like, they pop Ravage. Try and kill somebody. Maybe they'll kill one person with the morphling, but then they cut the rest of them kind of just stand there. <laughs> like, especially if they don't have ravage. I don't know how they take fights. At the moment. It'd be very difficult. I mean, it, it's it's kind of nice to ravage and then uh, throw down the tombstone as well, and let those zombies start to stack up nice and early, and they get two zombies coming out. But yeah, as you say, without the ravage, it it does look super lackluster from from Team Empire. I hope. TA maybe. Yeah, I can see yeah, a TA. It can work both ways. <laughs> Oh, oh this is uh, this is a good Timbersaw game as well. This is quite Very nice. Good. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Skyrath can be an issue, but uh, he doesn't really care. There's, uh, you know, there's there's melee heroes. There's a bear. There's, uh, uh, it doesn't do anything to the bear actually, does he? Because he doesn't have a primary tribute. Yeah, they only they have the Skyrath and the tiny for some kind of burst damage. Against... I've been seeing some till Timbers build Holy Locket as well. I, I know my Timberman built it in one of the major qualifier games as well when he played. But, Yeah, uh, I mean... I feel I, like you don't want to build Hood and Holy Locket. You like want some kind of bridge item before it's right. stone. And I think this game, the Hood's probably a lot more valuable. I don't think we'll see But what do I know? What do you know? That's a good question. What does he know? And what do we know? What does anybody know? Timber Saw, is it going to pay off for Team Empire? I hope they've put a lot of uh, faith in this Timber this game. He's the guy who's going to have to carry them through and allow their Morphling to come online. And it's going to be, I mean, uh, Windstrike, they can deal with the Timber Saw, but if this guy gets too far ahead, they will struggle. Um, another thing about the Holy Locket as well is that the active, I mean, it's okay. 25% amplification to your HP regen obviously works well with reactive armor. Like it's. Passive. Sorry, passive, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it, it's good. It's, but I think the the build up and like the the other stats which Holy Locket gives you is the main thing you're building it for, right? Like it's kind of a fifty fifty between the two. It's not entirely about the health regen. It's not entirely about because what does it give you? It gives you like uh, fifteen percent magic resist, uh, mana regen. Mana regen is it? Health regen as well? Yeah. yeah. It's two right, health it's regen. Nice I know it's nice. Up. That's the most important mm. thing. Like, it's, it's this bridge item that I would no mean, say, but no it's not, like, the hood act is so good this game against the Skyrath and the Tiny. Like, having that reduction to the burst, really nice, and the uh, hood gives more magic resistance. But with your reactive armor giving you so much health regen. Does come in sometimes. Sometimes. Okay, game number one, Windstrike versus Team Empire. I think it's a nice even draft. I would put my money on Windstrike just because I like um, their their draft and the sciences they have are going to be really, really strong versus the um, both the Timbersaw and the Morphling. But I'm excited to see what Empire can throw down. I think it's going to be a nice close backward and forward game, uh, in my opinion, which will probably actually favour Team Empire Hope. So no, I'm changing. I'm bailing. I'm bailing on my original prediction. Team Empire Hope got this one. I, I like the Windstrike draft as well, but this Timber could just go mad, and he could just win the game by himself. Maybe. 30 seconds. I feel like a lot of this is going to come down to the mid lane to get where the Iceberg uh, Especially within the first few levels before Timber starts to really output a lot of damage. So when Timber gets level 6, the matchup gets really hard, but Iceberg does have good base damage to work with. So control as much CS as you can. The bear going for the sneaky rune. And uh, the Rubik will be here though. Sayu will probably level the lift just to make sure he secures that rune for his team. And the bear actually, yeah, yeah. Silent realizes and says, okay, all right. You can, you can take that rune. Although he's still going to fight for it. And... Oh, bear walked past. <laughs> hmm. Never mind. Uh, visit from uh, Lone Druid's mistress, Miss Micro. It do, it do. 
Um, so these lane matchups looking pretty good, I would say, for Team Empire. They've got the uh, Timbersaw mid versus the Kunker. That is a fairly Timbersaw favored lineup. In fact, Kunker might really struggle in this lane if he can't get his footing in. Uh, might need a rotation, but even then, rotating on a Timbersaw is pretty not good. This is hero doesn't care about other heroes coming to his lane. He's just like, oh, hi. I don't care about them. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's a lone, uh, a lone mech man. I don't know. I don't know what Timbersaw is. I have no idea. I don't even know that guy's lore. Uh, Black Arc's Angel fighting up with Yamich, but uh, even even an Undying can't really fight off versus level one uh, Scarath Mage with uh, this uh, double Mantle of Intelligence build. Yeah, we've seen this build more where they get just a one Mango as the only mana region, and they just go for the double Mantle on the circle instead, mm. kind of like a mid hero would. Yeah, I think that's because they tend to just kind of trade up and ditch all their mana and then go suicide under tower. Yeah. And that's, that's what I've seen. And then you can buy more mana regen later if you want to, or just keep jumping under tower. Uh, it does seem to be Dream taking control of this lane early on here. Um, I mean, well, Tiny does have uh, the better CS advantage. Yeah, this, this uh, Skyrath that I'm buying basically just making this lane a 1v1 with in the more like two separate battles going. Yeah. I should down you down there. But if more can gain any kind of lead, starts here yeah, just sitting up high agi. Gonna have really good damage to work. Oh, meanwhile, up at top, they're chasing away MYS Moon, but of course, on this Tidehunter, very tricky target to bring down. Even laying all their damage into him, they won't be able to kill him with this lane. They don't really have any burst. Uh, meanwhile, that is going to be an Undying feeding on the tower. Saw that one coming. Yep. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you, if you wanted to watch that, then uh, you can find me, but hopefully you didn't. Tiny CS. Nine last eight denied already. Not having a good the problem, when you play these brutal parries, you really need the Undying to secure your lane point. For this Sky Wrath, the Undying of the Sky just cancels her out. It makes it so <laughs> difficult without that protector. Yeah, when two unstoppable leaning forces collide, uh, they just get locked in a dance of death, which which takes up the entire lane, and uh, you don't you don't really get a, get a, a support in your lane anymore, Dream. I'm sorry, you're alone. Uh, meanwhile, in the middle lane, which we haven't really looked at so much, but uh, it is actually the Kunker off to an early lead as uh, Timbersaw. I'm um, gonna need to get these levels up in Welling Death. He has now got two levels, but actually low on mana for the time being, so kind of rough for him at the moment. Getting a decent amount of damage without the Welling Death, his lane isn't quite as easy. Yeah, it's good. yeah, especially with this uh, Tidebringer as well, coming in very, very useful, not just for the last hits, but also for the denies as well. I never understood why that spell keeps its damage for denies. It doesn't, doesn't really make any sense, does it? No, no, I don't get it either. I, uh, top lane's interesting as well. Like, they, they can't really do anything to this Tidehunter. You always want to fly, trying to right -click. Yep, toss out onto Dream. Dream taking a lot of damage, but they're jumping forwards for non grata here. If they can find a kill, they can. The K comes through, and down goes a tiny, but Yamish just fights off versus Dream, and will actually bring down the Morphling. Both carries dead. This lane belongs to supports now. But to be fair, it always did. I mean, if, again... If always want to fly, dropping low at top as well. Does just about survive the onslaught from West Moon and Sayu as well. And uh, Silent just continuing to farm his way up, although uh, these anchor smashes starting to be very, very annoying, especially when he gets him on both the hero and the bear. His damage feels very lackluster. Radiant yeah, that's the thing. Oh. oh, you see the TP from Rubik? He's scattered. Oh... <laughs> Where did he TP to? Yeah. Oh, he's like, <laughs> always want to fly. He's like, nope, 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 nope. Get, get away. Uh, foiled. Yeah, that was that was a really good heads up play. Say, I mean, he's always been the stand standout player on Empire Hope for me anyway. He is actually. Nothing. Come on, Rubik. Come on. Nah, no, he's not going. There you go. Ishan killed. Always want to fly. That was a cute play. Silent gets level five though on this third druid. He's going to get a little. Damage, but yeah, when the root chances come out, this lane gets a little bit more hard for the fight. Suddenly, there is some kind of kill potential. Yep. He might be tanky, but uh, being held in place and just beaten up by the lone druid is uh, never pleasant. And they're sending the bear in for this rune, but the raw does actually come off the mark, which means that they will not get that kill. Oh, the uh. Avalanche connects, but uh, non-grata. 
The toss comes out way too late. It's way after the avalanche, therefore it just doesn't do the triple damage anymore. Um, I just wanted to talk about as well, I just noticed something with uh, with that fight there. Uh, check out the bear's damage when he gets Fade Bolt and Anchor Smash on him. He hits for zero. Oh good. <laughs> so, <laughs> you your bear literally hits for nothing. One thing that I am really surprised by personally is this mid lane. Iceberg is owning. This Damn, son, he's destroying Kodos. This is not what we expected. Yeah, I, I, 32 and 12 I, to 19 and 9. I expected Iceberg to have a good time, but I thought Timber would be doing a lot better than he is. Trying to heal up when he's neutral. Goodness gracious. Yeah, I spoke taking no prisoners here as uh, so he's off to a flying start in this mid lane and there's but it's a rotation on a rotation as Black Arx Angel coming in as well, but that's the X mark coming out from Iceberg as well with the torrent, with the boat, they throw down everything and in comes the Scarab from behind and they find the kill onto Kodos. They deal with the Timbersaur and uh, dying goes, oh, never mind. <laughs> that's such a fantastic play by Windstrike as well because Iceberg just hits level six on this Kunker and they time the rotation perfectly. As soon as he gets hit, the Sky Officer they're ready to go and to they, they're, they're two steps ahead of uh, Empire Hope at the moment. And it's, uh, it's feeling pretty good for Windstrike. I mean, they come off a win and uh, they seem to be carrying their momentum through to this game as well, at least to this laning phase. Of course, a uh, game nowhere near decided as of yet, especially with this big scary tide of morphling on the enemy team, but it's a great start. And we were kind of saying that the Timbersaw can run away with this game, but I know it's only the first six and a half minutes, but seven minutes now, it doesn't really feel like he's going to be able to do it this game, because he does need a good laning phase on this Timbersaw. Start winning all three lanes here at the moment. Look at the demise here, but... 40 denies between the whole team. Seven minutes. That's a lot of G's. And in comes the boat again, the combo out onto Kodos. I don't think he's enough, got enough damage even with the torrent to finish it off. Very nicely done by Iceberg to combo that all up properly. He's going for the... Oh! <laughs> that was a lot more damage than I expected, and apparently a lot more damage than Kodos expected. Damn! Treads double brace and yep. lots of damage. That is, as Phil Swift would say, a lot of damage. Oh, Sky's going to get the D ward as well. They've got the sentry down. Yeah, oh finds it on the high ground. I mean, I think we're going to throw it to net worth already, just because of, just because of the amount of kills we've been having. And uh, unsurprisingly, you got Iceberg. He's ripping it at the top. And up in top lane, a bit of brawling going on. This bear, was usual, sitting on zero health and zero damage. I'll be oh. honest, it feels like Iceberg might have heard us. And he's putting, yeah. he's, he's putting it right. <laughs> he's like, all right, you, you, I lose when I'm ahead, do I? Then? Yeah. And the thing is, well, he's going to be able to take so much space for this loaded to farm. I'm wondering whether Silent goes for this uh, kind of like Deso build again, like we saw in game one. They try and just push powers all the time. Whether he goes for something a little bit different, like a dragon like that. But he has the Blight Stone. He's been beaten down pretty slowly. Meanwhile, Kodos goes down in the middle lane again. We're watching MLS Moon trying to escape here. As always want to fly, pops the crits and actually goes for Sayu instead. Um, changing targets midway through gank, but with the root coming out onto Sayu, Rubik is going to be taken care of. The comes out as well, and they finish him off. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, there was a bit of a brawl going on as uh, they take down both the Undying and the and the Tibisaur in the middle lane. So, Windstrike finding kills across the map right now. Team Empire Hope. Well, it all rides on this Morphling now because everybody else is getting destroyed across this map. I mean, look at Tiny's net worth compared to Morpho. They won bot lane as well. He got all those denies at the beginning of the game. But he's rushing Blink on Lockcraft. I love that he does. He yep. just runs around the map. He knows that his other two cores are doing really well this game. But all he has to do is just help them. You know, support them. Just go and find these kills. Absolutely, repositioning is key as well, and he can get the toss if he wants. He's just going to do it on the spot, and the triple damage plus the silence. I mean, that's going to one-shot anybody on this map, I think. You there, buddy? Nope, not even close. is under attack. Well, coming into the 10 minutes, a 4k gold advantage, only one kill gained on Empire Hope. They have had their breakfast this morning, Windstrike, haven't they? <laughs> they have. They have. I really want to find out what breakfast was. Oh my god. Sayu in the middle, he just comes up to lane like, what's going on? And then a tiebreaker hits him. Oh, I'm a half elf. <laughs> Alright. That's, that's cool. I don't want to be here anyway. They've actually set the... <laughs> he just queues up a saddle for himself. <laughs> <laughs> that feels so bad. <laughs> Timbersaw's had to go up to top lane as well because he knows he can't lane up against this anymore. Who also has a 40 damage talent. Look at this damage coming out from Kung. Sweet. Yeah, he's going for the Shadow Blade and he can probably one-shot the Rubik with that Shadow Blade. I'm 
somewhere close anyway. They're going down to the side here now. This is a tough watermelon to crack, and with Dimbasol coming through, all the X marks a boat. Okay, never mind. Iceberg gets on top of him and just deletes. Oh, he gets it to the shrine, and this is going to be Empire Hope backing out of this gank. So the one kill they thought they could get on this map, even dropping the tombstone for it as well. And it does not pay off. I just, when you said that was a tough watermelon to crack, I just pictured Iceberg. Like looking at a watermelon in his hands and then just smashing it in his head. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Tough, no. <laughs> I always want to fly, taking a little bit of harass, some gentle shots across the bow, but the return damage is pretty insane. Kodos needs to get away from Silent here as he's running forwards with this bear. He doesn't make any connection with Kodos though, so he's going to be okay. Oh, don't worry, just roots are creep. Yep, thanks bear. I mean, most of the time when I'm playing Dota, I, I feel like, you know, I am the hero and my summons are like my kind of minions and I always end up shouting at my bear when I'm playing Lone Druid, like, root him, you... Do you do that? Is that just me? Yeah, uh, familiars as well, but I mean, admittedly, that's not RNG, so yeah. Well, Iceberg is... Oh, no, it could be actually some trouble if Black Ark's Angel comes in as well. They're going to need more heroes to deal with him, though, especially with this boat buff helping him out. And yeah, he just runs away from this gang. A bunch of heroes coming in, but it's too much. They do get the boat. Okay. Okay. Pretty good. It's pretty good. Available now. Tower is under what attack. can they do with it? That's the question. Can they yeah. actually use this boat on the Rubik to do something? Yeah, I like the way I like the way he's heading bottom though. I think that's the right idea. Also, um I wanted to do one point in Narcan to kind of see jumping forwards. Oh no! The double damage blink! Dream just gets torn apart and Rubik's like, oh I'm here with my boat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's the, he just literally just picked up the blink from the side shot. Just Top lane, they're using the catapult wave just to take this tower and they do get it. Now they're turning to NYS Moon using that spirit link. Where is your root? Eh, there it is. Comes off right off the track, Kraken Shell as well, which is pretty nice timing, but always want to fly. Has to stay away. Doesn't have that much health on the Brewmaster to play with. And no mana for a split either, so just keeps its distance quite sensibly. And the thing is, Morphling, so scary to come back to this bot lane again now that Tiny has Blink. He can't sit on lower, on high agi like he has before. Yeah, he will just die. Uh, as fast as he would have done before. Yeah, and also Kodos comes into the top lane with a haste rune and everyone just runs out. Like, they're, they're, they're not staying near. They're not They're not even risking. It's, it's very crisp play from Windstrike, to be honest. Very well. Yeah. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Well, uh, TPing here is in. They've got this boat from side. Can they make something happen with it? They go from the left onto the lone druid. Can they hold them still long enough for the boat to connect? They will not. It only gets the bear. And now this gank is pretty difficult, though they see Don Grata instead. The tiny, a much better target, but the blink passed. Actually, just about grazes Kodos there. And now they toss Timbersaw back to the creeps. Get away, and now the counter toss. Get in, sir! He has got the Ravage, doesn't want to use it, though. That would have been super underwhelming if it had used the Ravage. I know, but it would have looked cool. <laughs> it looks cool, though. You know, that toss in. I love how they just ignored mid lane, because they couldn't kill Kodos. And then Morphing has to ignore bot lane because he can't go there anymore. And they lost their tier on top. I'm ready for a sick toss ravage though. Iceberg though, he's coming in, he's got the Shadow Blade, he wants the one shots, and down goes the Rubik, not quite actually still surviving the onslaught from Yamage, but one hit from Iceberg, it's all that's needed, down he goes, the damage cleaving through, but the Avalanche as well, holding them still, Tidehunter is up into the air, when he comes down to quit the bank, Kodos as well, connect onto that one, he uses the Ravage, but what for, there's no follow up damage, there's nothing you can do, as Dream comes flying in from the sidelines, what are you doing here, this is not where he wants to be, I think the Rubik tossed him in, or maybe, no, non I think it was, turns into the Tiny though, I think Dream is going to survive this one for now, but not going to find a kill, and now they're just running into the undying hit. Your extra health doesn't matter. He really wants an iceberg on the Kung He went full out. I don't know. Yeah, just seeing if Kung was going to stuck around, but it didn't happen. And once again, Empire lose many and gain one. They only take down Yamich for that aggressive play onto the Rubik. This timber pick could have been so beautiful. Dyer's top tower it's amazing. Under attack. But that laning stage just went so badly for him. And when you fall behind against the printer, it, it does not look pretty. No. <laughs> no, it does not. And they look towards Roche. Uh, so they almost have the death side on the lone group. Possible, but I'd like to see them try and fight now that Ravage is down. Like, don't, don't stop this pressure. Keep going, Time. force fight. Scanning. And they're going to try and fight around this bounty board. I mean, Empire are going for this here. Um... Are they? 
Just yeah. Rune. They're smoked up on the side of Windstrike. Empire just like, okay, we'll make some rotations in to get a rune, but no, you get nothing. Down goes Kodos. Meanwhile, Empire trying to make something happen here. I mean, they get the torrent. You can steal the photos. Oh no, it's actually side side. Actually, side was just dropped. Oh my god. Absolutely destroyed as I think the tiebreaker came through onto the high ground and the X marks as well. And now he's gonna bring back the Undying. You can run, but you're coming back straight to me. Meanwhile, they start to deal with MYF Moon as well. I mean, three heroes running, and there's nothing for him to do. Sai is still on the run. Never mind. Iceberg cuts him in half. And uh, Windstrike cutting through this game like it's butter. Windstrike are just, they're making all the right moves on the map at the moment. They, like I said before, they're two steps ahead of everybody. Like, they know they're going to go for these top runes because it's the only kind of place on the map where they feel safe, the Radiant side. Yep. A few minutes rune comes up, non grass blinks in, blows up the timber with the help of the sky. And but all of a sudden, it's five versus four. Radiant don't have ravage. Great reads. Great reads. And this, this, this isn't Windstrike I'm saying. This is Fly to Moon. This is They're fine. back, baby. This is like epicenter level fighting. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you, if you can pull this off versus the likes of uh, you know OG and such, then then I'll say it's it's uh, epicenter level flight to moon. If they can beat Gambit, if they can beat Gambit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they beat Gambit, we we will officially rename them, reform them back to their previous glory. Oh, they actually get the lift off in time, but it doesn't really... There's no follow-up. Yeah, he does. I thought they were going to keep him locked down long enough, but now the split comes out and they'll turn this one around, laying into the Undying. Silent just doing a ton of damage from the back lines there on the Lone Druid. And then... Uh, he's the flying tide, not what you really want. And now Kodos has controlled up, and they're going to throw him up again. Another tornado up onto the Tide Hunter. Oh, the poor guy. He spent 90% of this fight in the air, and now when he comes down, it's going to be a pretty painful reawakening. The Kraken Shell pops the silence, but non Grider was ready for that. He jumps in immediately with the toss, and down goes MYS Moon. Kunka has a six and a half minute Shadow Blade BKB. Yeah. Yeah, that is a BKB, isn't it? 18, 0, and 5. How do you get an iceberg? With a BKB. Yeah. No, but I'm looking I at France. I don't. I don't really. I don't really have them. You're looking in the wrong place. <laughs> They're hunting again as well. If they keep locked down long enough for Morphling to get a right click damage off, then yeah. Get down so to like two <laughs> minutes of lockdown. <laughs> <here>. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Hopefully, knowing Iceberg, you just go to Radiance Middle Tower. Oh, the uphill miss chance. Thank you very much. So we'll take that 20%, is it? 20, I think 20 or 25. Uh -oh. Radiance top tower is under I've only got 6,000 hours in the game. I don't know these things. <laughs> 9,000 and I don't know. <laughs> There's no, I don't think it actually says anywhere, does it? I mean, there's so many things where it just doesn't contain information. <laughs> That's why it's so hard to learn data. As it goes. Yeah, absolutely. When are we going to make this game easier to learn? Oh, Get these filthy shashes out my game. <laughs> Radiant structures are fortified. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Again, I mean, I said last series as well, I wondered whether they'd go Roche. And they don't take Roche massively. Again, they might look because they know they're so far ahead. Iceberg just goes up to the high ground and starts to tower. Like, he's not scared of anything. They found uh, the tide one. They have, haven't they? And they very much want to kill him. But he's trying to make himself elusive here. The toss is up. The Ravage comes out. Lands on to three. Well, one of them being a bear. But they might get a quick return account on some non -Gurana, But they can't get the punch in Dream. Finally, the Chakram comes in to finish the job. Now he's trying to get the spin off. Will be successful. And always want to fly. A tiny toss up the wrong target. Tiny, of course, is the Morphling. Silent trying to deal with the Tombstone. Actually, falling fairly low himself. And the toss finishes him up. I spoke with the BKB. And now they just turn around and blow up Dream with that silence. And now look towards Kodos as well. The X marks is out on him, Timber Chain. He tries to time it, doesn't work. The rock connects and now held still. But they actually change targets on the Undying here. Iceberg trying to chase him down. It's falling kind of low on HP here. Iceberg's gonna die. The toss comes in just about in time and Timbersaw is actually gonna bring him down. Well, it's actually the toss from Sai which gets it. And uh, well, they lose quite a lot from that wind strike, taking a very messy fight. They get four kills, but they lose three heroes and. I mean, it's a huge. Uh, look at that gold. Oh my god. 2,000. Uh, oh god. And the XP as well. Look how much XP Timber got. 4,400. Oh my god. I mean, he's going to immediately die afterwards. Oh, okay. Well, that was. Uh, okay. <laughs> never mind. All right. I see. Yeah, they, they got a little bit overconfident there on Wind Strike in the mid lane. They, uh, they made some nice plays with the Tidebringer, though. He killed the uh, oh. Tidehunter with the. 
and then he killed the Rubicon the Undying with the cleave, which often get the ultra kill. I didn't want to say it at the time, but um, the comeback gold was 2,322. So, uh, yeah, have, have fun with that one, guys. Oh, no. It's written in the stars sometimes. I love how Rubik got 1,200 gold for killing... <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> this guy's like, oh my god. I can get yours now. Get yours. Now, get yours. <laughs> so if he gets X now from the... Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't... I spoke time. Well, MYS Moon taking some damage at Hasted non Grata coming in, trying to go for MYS Moon here. And now they actually pop the ultimate on the Undying as well as these two tanky heroes on the front line and a quick pause out from Kunker. Iceberg, just waiting a second. All the Malini, please, everybody. Gee, sorry. Yeah, just, just wanted a second to, uh, you know, talk, talk things through. I mean, they dropped the Tombstone, they popped the ult on Undying and they win strike just... And they're just too wasted skill. Yeah, I'm not really too sure about that one. Popping the Tombstone for a Haste rune is ever questionable. They are going rage. They know the Ravage is nuts, but at least they're not for another 15. They're not really scared. And they got Roche in that time. Close. It is, isn't it? But they're not ready to fight though on anyone. What's Tim doing? It. Yeah, he did go this time. Really lost. Okay, I, I kind of appreciate that. I'm sure when you're losing, you're probably not the eyes, right? No. <laughs> Especially in a knockout qualifiers game, you don't really want to be experimenting with new items. Yeah. Not the time. Yeah, meanly going for that spin. They've actually got the Morphling here. They silence up inside the Mystic Flare. They have enough damage finishing off the tosses there. He goes down. Dream is dead for 46 seconds. And now they'll look towards MYS as well as down goes the Tide Hunter. Hopes shattered. Dreams dying as uh, Windstrike comes down the middle lane. Rubik just push out the mid lane with the Fae Pop. wait the next group wave now. Probably gonna allow Tide enough time to Radiance middle tower is under attack. Yeah, I mean yeah. the creep wave's here now. <laughs> what wasn't that long? I think it's gonna ditch coat Yep, time to crit some fools. Sometimes you see ACs, you see Halberds and icebergs like they don't give me damage. Yeah. Do they allow me to one shot the enemy support? Oh, no. They're just ripping through this. Oh, with the oh yeah, so much sieging power, and this is what Windstrike were doing last series as well, just drafting themselves a ton of sieging power in these drafts to allow them to push the games early if they get the advantage. And that's certainly what they have, 18k. What? The misses! Radiance middle has what, on the tower? Iceberg's gonna turn around. Ooh. Oh, shame. And now they're in Ravage, and they've got Iceberg in a really awkward position here. He's just gonna drop! Oh dear me, now they're looking for always want to fly as well, running forwards, the X marks stolen from the Rubik, brings him back, he doesn't have to split, but do they have the damage to bring him down? I think they may well do, the rest of his team trying to get out of there quickly, Nongrata waiting in the tree, seeing if you can help out in some way, some shape, some form, but it's not going to help, always want to fly, gets turned apart by Empire, and they find two big kills once again. Do, do people in chat remember that when we say, <laughs> when Iceberg gets the hit, there's some really silly play, over comp. Example number... <laughs> 4,328. <laughs> yeah, that's something. That's something. Team trying to uh, try to find some momentum here. Um, this is a double damage druid. Oh, the tree on the roof. Get away. I mean, okay. <laughs> Not that exciting. <laughs> he got the tree grab from Tiny, but it's just wandering around with the tree <laughs> instead of a star. You silly, Rubik. I'm trying to make this game as entertaining as I can. Well, you know. I, I mean, I... I I don't think you need to. It's no, a pretty, pretty it's exciting it's game. Iceberg's uh, in, in really far ahead. So that always makes it fun. Uh, BKB is a really good item, by the way. If yeah, you use it. <laughs> uh oh, get out of there, Timber Saw. Luckily, he's got that Timber Chain away and gets up to the high ground. But the bear comes in with the demolish ability. It's a lot. They might not have their pirate, but they've still got their teddy. Uh, actually, they do have their pirate now. Anyway, as Iceberg takes care of these middle racks, they're just focusing up. <laughs> Iceberg is so aggressive, he's just sitting on the high ground alone, like, yep, this is fine. Meanwhile, they've blocked damage in the back lines, the Morphling coming through, doing some real work here, as he goes on silent as well, but is going to get lifted up and taken out of this fight for a while. Meanwhile, Iceberg pops a BKB, gets to work on the buildings, but now's the ultimate from the Undying, coming forward. Meanwhile, they have the stun, they have the lift, they have the toss, down goes Dream, he's dead, 50 seconds, no buyback. Iceberg now come onto the front of this fight, the X marks off onto the Timbersaur as well, they're going to drag him back. Iceberg is ready, but no, he doesn't actually get the uh, torrent off in time, now stolen by the Rubik, what can they do? Meanwhile, Kodos running around this front line and actually this um, tiny tosses up MIS Moon and actually gets a kill onto the Tide Hunter and 
he's dead as well, 30 seconds. I was just wondering whether Ty had been set up in the air by the Psycho again or whether he was actually dead or not. It's difficult to know because he's never in the fights one way or the other. Yeah, he's up in the air either if it's by a toss, a Cyclone, a Yules, everything. Well... Torrent as well. Yeah, tor Torrent as well. As, as, it's a very aerial game. Radiance top shrine. Without Ravage, it's just so difficult for Radiant to take fights. Yeah. And again, you saw Tidehunter tries to run in and tank some damage. Three Masters just goes, no, nope. see you later, mate. And they just take the fights around this Tide getting... Yeah. Dyer it feels like it's such an easy win strike, uh, game for Windstrike to play. Do whatever they want it feels. Except run up onto high ground on your it's own as a conquer upset. carrying a uh, huge net worth of bond. Yeah, except going one versus two. Yeah. Radiant I'm not using scanning. B. He did get ravaged though, to be fair, and now they take a rax from it as well, so you could say worth. Yeah. It was just a and you know, <laughs> he, get, he gave the kill to Rubik, was it? Oh no, that's the first one. What's up? <laughs> oh no, he is. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's in trouble, he's dead. <laughs> wow, what a prediction from O'Farrell. Uh, am I Moon gonna drop us? Oh no, he used the ravage! Why? Okay, alright, alright, alright. My bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, they take down Silence once, but where is the conquer? Oh dear, he's pushing. Well, doesn't matter. They blow up Dream all the same as the Tiny jumps in and gets that nuke damage down with the silence from Yamich as well. As GG is called. This will be Windstrike taking another competitive, another convincing win today. I mean, it is a competitive game technically, but, well, it didn't really feel like it. 26 minutes this one. The longest of